him will never be disappointed. For there is no, no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord over all. I gotta stop. Because that's one of those Pentecostal moments right there. That I don't know how to describe it, nor do I want to understand it. That when I hear those words, as I realize that He is my God, the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is my God. And that He loves me just like that He loved them and cares for me just like He did every person in the Old Testament that He's there for me. It just... Well, if you don't know, I just can't tell you. The Apostle Paul has commanded all believers, both Jews and Gentiles alike, to minister to each other because of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that's been given to them. And throughout this latter section of Romans, from chapter 9 through chapter number 16, he focuses in chapter 13 about the responsibility of believers to respect our government. In chapter 14, he emphasizes the responsibility that we have as believers not to offend one another. And in chapter 15, he reminds us again of God's saving grace. And then in chapter 16, all oh, the names the names of those who have also personalized this gospel. Names of individuals that are, yes, difficult for us English-speaking 21st century believers to even know how to say, but to embrace the gospel that God wants us and cares for us. As we think about the crowns, rewards, the praise that is given to the only wise God, the God of the Jews and the God of the Gentiles, the God of all creation. And we wonder, and we just wonder what it is to think of Him. That anything that we can possibly think of Him, He is greater and farther, bigger and better. Now to the all-powerful, all-loving, all-gracious God. He declares all glory, both now and forever. And he cries out, like a good Baptist would cry out, Amen! Amen! We're saved, not by our wills, not for our benefit, and not for our own glory. We are saved only by His power. We are saved only by His loving will and His gracious design so that He will receive glory both now and forever and forever. Amen. And any time that the old devil comes before Him and says, You're not gracious, we become the witnesses. Every time the old devil would walk up and say, You're not just, we become the witnesses. Every single time one of the attributes of God are ever called into question, one of us are called as the witness of God just to the opposite of who He is. Not just now, but forevermore. Amen. So, let it be. Christ, call upon you, Jesus, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For we believe that you are the only hope, and we believe that you are God's Son who lived and died in our place, and was raised from the dead, to live forever and ever as our intercessioner. Lord, right now, this moment, we call upon you as our Savior and as our Lord. We trust in you. We embrace you. We love you, Lord. This morning, if you prayed that prayer with me, maybe for the very first time, I want to give
give you the opportunity not only just to make it known to me, but to everyone around you that God has saved your soul. And I want to give you that opportunity this morning to respond. Maybe you have more questions, that's fine. I've got a million of them. I've had a million of them. Today. That's good. But this morning, you prayed that prayer along with me that you want Jesus to be your Savior. I invite you to step up out of your place and to come down this aisle and to let it be known that you asked Jesus in your heart. And the way we're going to do that is there's going to be a distraction. There's going to be a conversion. Sherry's going to come up and sing. Virginia's going to play the piano. They give you that opportunity to respond. And let people know that you're saved. This morning, if you've had this opportunity in the past, somehow to ask Jesus into your heart and mind, you kind of went off your separate ways. And this morning, you'd like to come back to the this would be a great time. Maybe West Little needs to be your church home. And you need to make this your church family. This morning, this will be the opportunity for you to step out of your place and let that be yours. Would you stand with me and let's pray one more time. Father, may your will be done in hearts and lives. For it's in Christ Jesus.